Kevin, I'm talking to you today because Church Marketing Sucks is having a birthday. Yes, we are. Should we sing happy birthday? No, that would be too weird. <laughs> That'd be a little weird. It would be weird. So, <laughs> tell me about it. Yeah, so the, the Church Marketing Sucks blog, uh, the first blog post went up in uh, on July 22nd, 2004, uh, which was a decade ago, if I've got my math right. Amazing. <laughs> so uh, in internet land, we are a dinosaur. Uh, we predate YouTube and Twitter. Uh, which is kind of which is kind of funny because uh, that's exactly what you guys are here to stop. <laughs> is the church acting like dinosaurs? Right. Yes, that's true. <laughs> so you can say we've so, been there, we've done that. We can defeat this dinosaur. Yeah. So hopefully we're not a dinosaur, even though we are. But <laughs> so yeah, it's been ten years, um, and we're. We're thankful to still be here. We're amazed that we're still here. Um, I, you know, nobody does anything for ten years now uh, these days. So especially, it's especially in the internet world, right? Exactly. So I mean, like I said, dinosaurs. Uh, so it's just an amazing thing that's happening. We're kind of throwing a month long party to celebrate this uh, ten years of church marketing sucks. Awesome, awesome. What what are what are some of the festivities planned? Um, well, we have lots of discounts and giveaways. Uh, so uh, every book that we have uh, in our all the books we've done, uh, Outspoken, Dangerous, the Church Communication Heroes, our big Getting Started series, they're all on sale. Um, so every one of them is is discounted in some way. Uh, the Getting Started books are are the individual ones are ninety nine cents a piece, uh, down from two ninety nine. Uh, you can get all three of them in the three in one combo pack for two ninety nine. Nice. Um, so if if you don't have our books yet, go grab them now. We're doing kind of a big <laughs> month long uh celebration sale. Right, now are you gonna and do then, are you gonna do any promotions uh outside of the church marketing sex ecosphere? Um we don't have anything planned that way, but that doesn't mean we won't. So for instance uh, we so have that fun uh so, so for instance, if make it up as we go along, right, right, which is the best way to do it. Uh, <laughs> so, so let me get this straight: if, if for instance, Church Mag Press wanted to give away, do some giveaways or some discounts for uh, those that love and appreciate Church Marketing Sucks and the amazing ten years that you guys have had so far, that that's a possibility. Am I right? That is definitely a possibility. Awesome, awesome. Now, Kevin, how long have you been working with Church Marketing Sucks? I've been with it since the beginning, so I've been here 10 years. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> like, it's just for having done this, because like you said, nobody does it for this long. Like, no, nobody so does I, it for this I long. I am the dinosaur. Yeah, you, you are a dinosaur. <laughs> Enough with the dinosaur talk. <laughs> yeah. You know, you've been doing this for ten years. Like, what what has the journey been like for you? Like, I've been I've been doing church mag for not not even half that yet. You know, and so I mean, ten years, like you said, in the internet world and the blogging world, that is a long time. What has this journey been like for you? It's been an interesting one. When we started, it was um, the conversation was very different. We were in some ways starting the conversation. There wasn't um, a church marketing industry or a, a, a field of, of church marketing. There weren't books you could go buy. There weren't a ton of blogs or resources mm -hmm. that you could read. Uh, you couldn't find a ton of help. And and the help wasn't, it wasn't so much how do we do church marketing? How do we make it better? What do we, you know, how do I do all this stuff? It was why? <laughs> Should I even be doing this? Is this okay? Is this you know sinful or evil or whatever <laughs> word you have for it? Uh, and in the beginning, uh, that kind of defense of church marketing was a lot of what we were doing. Wow. Uh, our philosophy category was <laughs> was where a lot of our posts went, kind of giving a a philosophy of church marketing and and why we think this is important and why churches should be doing it. And over the years, that's kind of transitioned. And and these days, it's much. We rarely talk about you know why you should do it because it's it's much more 
yes, of course you should be doing it. You need to be doing it. And it's much more how to do it. And it's a lot more how to type stuff. Um, so that's definitely been a big, a big shift over 10 years. Um, though we definitely don't have to defend it as much. Um, do, do you think that there's room in the space or the more the philosophy behind church marketing? Where do you think that conversation goes? I mean, to me, there's still some room to talk about the importance of it, just to kind of reiterate it. But how do you see the philosophy, the discussion of philosophy regarding church marketing? How do you see that evolving in the future? I think, like you said, it still needs to happen. I mean, there's there's churches all over the spectrum, you know, and it's it's just kind of moved along the spectrum. Of now there's more churches that get it than there were 10 years ago. <laughs> This many now it's you know, have a much bigger but there's you know however three hundred thousand churches in the u s there's a right. huge chunk that don't get it, and you can tell from their websites and you can tell from you know the the corny stuff they do because they're not they're not really doing it they're they're kind of doing it by accident or they're um just not putting any effort into it, so that conversation definitely still needs to happen um you know, and we do still touch on it every now and then. It's just not the <laughs> the raging debate it used to be. Um, so I think you know that conversation still has to be somewhere and still has to uh, be a part of this church marketing discussion because we're not all you know big mega churches with budgets and communication directors. Exactly. You know, a lot of these places are tiny little churches that don't have resources and they don't teach marketing in the seminary and right. And, you know, and I think that get this stuff out. And, and I think that that shows the value of church marketing sucks because like you said there, there's such a broad spectrum and those that still need to work on it need a place that they can craft and, and learn these things because you don't need the mega budget you don't need the the mega video you don't need all of those big shiny things although nice because that's not what real church marketing is about you guys talk about the fundamentals of good communication that can be as simple as an broadcast email that is only text no image i mean you, you you're talking about the fundamentals of messaging and that's one thing that i'm concerned about the future of church marketing is that we're going to get lost and we're going to we're going to forget about where we came from and the foundation of good church marketing is going to be lost in all the lights in all the show in all the social media accounts it's really going to get lost, the fundamental reason of why we're doing what we're doing and what really good marketing is because bad marketing can have good lighting. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a good one. I'm going to steal that line. We, I think we said way back in the beginning even that you know, church marketing that sucks is, yes, it's – you know, clip art and and horrible Comic Sans fonts and typos and and all that stuff that we know is bad and we kind of snicker at. Mm -hmm. But it's also when you go the other end and you have the glossy, shiny lights and fancy big show and everything so huge that you've you've lost the message and you've lost the point and you've you know you kind of have that um, that marketing shine where everything is so slick and polished and like a greasy advertising exec and and people don't want that either you know that kind of approach totally sucks too um, and so you can you can kind of fall off either end and, and have problems on either extreme um, so that's absolutely true that you know we do need to be careful now that we're learning how to do these fancy things and some churches have budgets for these fancy things and sometimes it goes off the rails and that still sucks yes it does so clearly <laughs> I think we've established that church marketing can still suck and will suck and that we need church marketing sucks. So tell us finally, Kevin, as editor of uh, Church Marketing Sucks, what do you think or what do you foresee the next 10 years of church marketing sucks being like? I don't know. I didn't know where these 10 years were going to go, so I don't know where the next exactly, 10 years Exactly, exactly. I figured you'd say that. I figured you'd say that. Considering the fact that you're making up as you go along, who knows, right? Yeah. What are we posting next week? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, it's, a good, it's a good question to think about and kind of wonder where where things are going to go. Um, and then some of this is just, you know, all of social media and technology and where is it taking us? And, Nobody you know, knows. Yeah. It, you know, 10 years ago, social media wasn't a conversation. We didn't have iPhones 10 years ago. Um, 
right. there's you know, so many things have changed drastically. It's kind of in some ways a little scary to think ahead that far. Yeah, but yeah, I do think yeah, ten year, ten years ago we didn't have things that we feel the need to fast from. Yeah, yeah. I have to give you know I have to give up my my Twitter account now. And <laughs> ten years ago it was really it was I, it was conceived, created, account created, addicted to, and then you need to fast for it all in less yeah. than ten years. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot happening in the next 10 years. Um, I do think things like uh, part of what social media has done is kind of empowered the people uh, and given, especially in churches, you have this lay people have this power to communicate and, and spread the gospel and talk about their church and do things that you couldn't do 10 years ago. And certainly not, you know, 15, 20 years ago, people weren't doing anything like that. Uh, I think that's really kind of changed the landscape, and and I think there's just a long, you know, upward swing of of people being more involved in churches and more lay leadership and more, you know, it's not just the pastor leading the charge. Um, and there's a lot of things people can do. Uh, Social Media Sunday uh, was this was this past week, uh, which was an event an event put on by two volunteer uh, Episcopal Church communicators who said, let's encourage some use of social media and encourage people to share their churches online uh, and, and do some cool stuff. And this huge thing sprung out of it. It was just an awesome thing that was totally, you know, volunteer-led. There was no organization behind it. There was no, um, you know, it wasn't the diocese or the, the national church or anything making this happen. And it was, you know, a lot of mega churches are social media Sunday is every Sunday. They're, mm -hmm. you know, they're out there doing it all the time. Uh, and these smaller churches that either don't have it or, or they're not, if they're just figuring it out, it was a, a great opportunity to kind of try things out and see what works and build some momentum. And that was all just, you know, three months ago, <laughs> a couple of people said, hey, let's do this, threw up a website, you know, put on some, put some text together and launch this thing. Uh, so there, there's just, there's power in the pews of people taking action and moving forward and doing stuff, and I think I think that's kind of that's kind of what church is all about. You know, throughout the centuries, that's people stepping forward and starting things. And you know, I think this needs to happen and going forward and doing it and not waiting for you know the the deacon board or the elders or the pastor to decide we need to have an official whatever doing this. Right. Uh, <laughs> the people have stepped up and done it. And I think technology has kind of enabled us to, to realize, hey, that, that can still work now. I can still do that. Uh, and I think in the next 10 years, there's going to be a lot of that. There's going to be a lot of, you know, grassroots people in the pews uh, doing ministry, which is what church should be. I mean, that's that's what it's about. All right. Well, we have an entire field of new people to educate about good marketing and, and good communication so that when they are powered in their pew to use social media, they're, they're doing it the most effectively, effective way possible. So, Kevin, absolutely happy birthday, Church Marketing Sucks. We love you guys. <laughs> Thank you.